Hi guys, welcome back to Linksight Two Hundred One. Uh, today's lecture is set three point two. But before that, um, I want to mention to you about this interesting comment on the YouTube video for set uh two point four super seg super segmental feature. Okay, so um, I don't know whether uh this lady is in our Linksight Two Hundred One, but um, she's saying that um, when I show the the tones, she said that she, uh, it would be hard for her to learn a tone language. And she has a question that um, how is the lack of tone in the English language affects people whose native language is not tone based? Okay. Yeah, the um the answer is yes. There are, of course, there are some uh, of effect. Um, if you do not have some feature in your native language and you want to learn another language which use the specific feature that is lacking in your language, it will be harder for you to learn the language. Okay. So, for example, um. Her example is accurate, actually. For English, you don't have tone. So if you try to learn a tone language as an English native speaker, you'll be hard. Okay. Um, but um, yeah, this is from the perspective of uh, second language learning. This is a problem called the transfer, transfer, transfer problem. In other words, if the target language, the language that you try to learn is closer to the to the, to your native language, then it will be easier for you to learn the language. On the other hand, if they are far away, then it's harder for you to learn the language. Um, back to linguistics, actually specifically to acquisition. Um, children don't care about this. Uh, I can mention to you. Uh, this very interesting example of Japanese. Okay, so uh, Japan in Japanese, there is no distinction between l, e sound, and er sound. So that a common English error the Japanese speaker will make is that they pr pronounce play and pray in in the same way. Okay, because they cannot tell the difference between l and r sound. However, for um, Japanese acquiring kids, there's no such problem. They can distinguish the sound between, they can distinguish L and R without any problem when, when they are young. However, when they become a, a native speaker of Japanese, they lost their ability. They, they lose their ability to dis distinguish these two sounds. Very interesting, right? Okay. So um, I want to show that I do reply to the comments. Okay. So if you have any question, just leave me comments on the YouTube video. Okay, let's back to today's lecture. Okay, today's topic is free variations and complementary distribution. This is about phon phonology, okay? okay. Um, let's begin with a review. So last time we talked about phoneme. Phoneme is the mental representation of sound. So we use a double slash to represent the mental or phonemic representation. Okay, for example, C is represented in this this symbol. And um, if we want to show the physical phonetic representation, we use square brackets. Okay. And then the second part we, we talked about last time is minimal pair. Minimal pair is the pairs of words in a language that differ in only one segment. In other words, phoneme, and they have distinct meanings. For example, C and T, these two words will be a minimal pair because they 
distinguish from each other in one segment, S and T, and they have two different meanings. Okay, the third one we talked about last, last time is elephone, uh, different phones of the same phoneme. Okay, so um, a different, uh, uh, the same phoneme could have different phonetic or physical realizations. And all these different physical realizations are the elephants of the same phoneme. Okay, this is a review. And then uh, I want to show you. I want to show you this uh, interesting video. This is my daughter. Uh, we went to the Red Park Zoo during the winter break, and um, we have an amazing animal encounter experience. See the lions so close to oh. us. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh. Like pretty cool, right? Pretty cool, right? Yeah. She's yeah. like a big cat, but a lot bigger than any any yes. giant dog they have ever seen. My baby is playing peekaboo with the lion. She just kissed the lion. Okay, this is not relevant to today's lecture, but just for entertainment. Okay? Okay. Okay, same or different phone names. Um, when we have two sounds, for example, um, if we have this sound, a per sound, and then we have a per sound with aspiration. Okay, the question is, are these two sounds same or different phone names? In other words, are we going to put it in this manner, double slash, or we are going to put them in square bracket so that they are the same spawning but just different realizations. So this is a question that we uh, constantly ask in uh, phonology. So there are some ways to, to, to test whether two sounds are the same or different phonemes. Okay. So, um, if we have a minimal pair, then we have then these two sounds will be different phonemes. And if we have free variation or complementary distribution, then the two sounds will be the elephants of the same phoneme. We are going to talk about free variation and complementary distribution later. Okay, just in this lecture. Okay. okay. So, uh, if we two sounds are minimal pair, then the two sounds would be different phonemes. So we talk about minimal pair last time, but just review this. So, for example, two uh, two different sounds which only differ in one, uh, sorry, two different words, which only differ in one sound. Here's is uh, here are some examples in English, tip and dip. So these two words only differ in the first sound, t and d, right? And also zip and zip, s and z. Okay. So um, from this example, they are minimal pair, right? So we know t and d are different, are different phonemes in English, right? And these two sounds are contrastive from each other only in the voicing feature. In other words, voicing feature can be contrasted in English. Voiceless, voiced, and that make all the difference. They make these two sounds, two different words, right? And on the other hand, um, you remember that aspiration is not a contrastive feature in English. So for example, um, you can say 
you try to say pop in English, you can say um you can say pop pop without aspiration for the final p, but you can also say pop right without changing the meaning, but it's kind of weird, but it's the same same sound of p same phoneme but just different realization so uh, aspiration is not contrastive in english however um, if we take a look in mandarin you will, you will see that aspiration feature is contrastive in mandarin chinese so if you try to say um, white in mandarin it would be bai without aspiration and if you try to say arrange in Mandarin, it will be pi, pi, pi. The only difference is the aspiration of the P sound. So aspiration is a contrastive feature in Mandarin. And this makes all the difference. So in Mandarin, we are going to use double slash to, to surround these two sounds, but in English we are going to use square brackets because they are the same phony. Okay, so uh, if we have minimal pair, it means that two sounds are different phonemes. Okay, then let's talk about free variation. Okay, um, Okay. If we have free variation, it means that uh, they are earphones of the same phoneme. So uh, here's another example again, stop. You can say stop without an aspiration for the final P. But you can also say stop, right? So P, an aspirated version and aspirated version of P are earphones of the same phoneme. In other words, we can say this, um, this phoneme P can be realized as this guy or this guy, okay? And let's talk about complementary distribution. If two sounds are in complementary distribution, then it means that they are the other phones of the same phoneme. Um, this complementary distribution is a, a common argument used in linguistics. So the idea is that if two things never occur in the same position, it means that these two things are the same, same thing in their nature. Um, they just have different realizations. Um, to use an analogy, it's like Superman and Clark Kent. So Superman and Clark, Clark Kent will never occur in the same position at the same time, right? So we know that these two guys, these two roles, is always the same person. They just have different appearance, right? Okay. So if two sounds are in complementary distribution, that means that these two sounds are the other form of the same phoneme. Okay. Here are some example. So. Uh, the pro marker S in English. So uh, for, if we have a voiceless sound, then we're going to have an S. Cat, cats, cats, right? Voiceless. But if we have a voiceless sound at the end of the word, then the realization will be birds, z, birds, voiced z, right? But we never have a uh, voiced with following a voiceless sound, and we never have a voiceless sound follow the following a voiced sound, right? So uh, in English, s and z can be earphones of the same phoneme because they are in complementary distribution. If you have a voiceless sound, then you always get s. And if you have a voice that sound, you always get Z. So they are the earphones of the same phoneme because they are in complementary distribution. Okay. Um, thank you. And if you have any question, email me or just leave a comment. Leave a comment on the YouTube video. Thank you. See you next time. Bye bye.